As parents, we are always on the lookout for ways to help our kids think of others. And this is especially true during the holiday season. This year, we are introducing a new tradition. We call them service spoons. And while this project is perfect for Christmas, it's really great for any time of the year. How it works is that there are 12 spoons correlating with the 12 days before Christmas or any 12 days that you like at any time of year. Each day we hang a spoon and accomplish the associated task. I've got a list of 25 service ideas on the blog to help you get started. Why spoons? The spoon is an excellent symbol for service. And what I love about these wooden spoons is that they are simple, they are unique, and they're humble. These ideas are not huge and they're not expensive. They're small ways to make a difference. For the tutorial part of this project, I am going to show and tell you how I carved the spoons. This is a great project for those wood scraps you have lying around. If this is your first spoon, you would do well to take the advice of one of the Woodcraft employees I spoke with recently and start with basswood. But if you, like me, believe in jumping in the deep end before you learn to swim, go ahead and use whatever is prettiest. Use a pencil to lay out some basic spoon designs. Just go for it and draw whatever looks good to you. You do want to be aware of wood grain. Don't try to carve a spoon across the grain. Go with it. I prefer to use the bandsaw to cut out the shapes. You can certainly carve this with hand tools entirely if you like. Given that for this project I made 12 spoons, that wasn't really something I gave any thought to. Besides, this part is really fun to do on the bandsaw. Next, I use a spoon gouge to remove material from the bowl section of the spoon. Hold the gouge firmly with both hands, one by the handle and the other gripping the metal close to the carving surface for stability. The purpose here is rough gouging, that is, removal of material. Don't try to make it perfect, just get the shape you want gouged out. I started out with this super cheap spoon gouge from Amazon and absolutely killed it on some hard maple. Despite numerous close observations of Paul Seller sharpening methods, I was unable to get the tool as sharp as I would like it, and I finally went to my local woodcraft and picked up a new fell gouge. The difference was fairly dramatic. Given it to do over again, I would buy the nicer gouge from the start, even though it was a little more money. Remember that maple I mentioned? If you aren't feeling the hand tooling, you can take a high-powered route. I gifted my husband this ArborTech ball gouge some time ago and suddenly remembered it while I was struggling with the hardwood. This ball powers material out like a beast. Full disclosure, it's not the cheapest tool in the world, but it's heck of fun. If you use the ball gouge, you can pick up just the same with the next step, the hook knife. The hook knife is a fantastic little inexpensive tool that takes just a little practice to start using effectively. It excels at carving a concave shape cleanly. Just be aware that one edge is really sharp and of which side that is or you may give yourself a nasty cut. Don't ask me how I know. Optionally, you can follow up the hook knife with a curved Hard scraper. I did find it useful to do a little extra smoothing in the spoon bowl area, but it's up to you how smooth you would like the end product to be. I was going for a primitive look with these spoons, so I didn't sweat it too much. Okay, if you are new to hand planes, let me introduce you to the spoke shape. This fun little tool is a champ at planing curved lines. I use the spoke shape to carve out the handles. It allows me to decide whether I'm going to simply give it a little round over or to go for more of a full round shape. Finalize your shape with some sanding. If you have an orbital sander, you may find it helpful to turn it upside down and hold it in place like a benchtop sander. A benchtop sander would also be useful if you have one. The sander I found the most useful was my spindle sander, which allowed me to follow the curves of the spoon. Honestly, there's a little back and forth here between the steps while you get the spoon where you want it to be. It's a bit of an organic process in terms of finding what you want to do with each spoon. And now it's time for my favorite step, the oiling. 
This is where you get to see the results of your hard work. I like to use walrus oil for this as it's food grade and it has a nice combination of beeswax and oils. It's also super simple, which is a big win in my book. Simply rub it on and wipe off the excess. And there you have it. Steps for carving a wooden spoon. Next, I drilled a hole at the end of each handle for hanging and wrote a number on each spoon with Sharpie. We are excited to introduce this new tradition to our family this holiday season. Hopefully, it will help center all of us on the true meaning of the season and become something we look forward to every year. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe for more woodworking videos as well as home improvement projects. You can find this post with all of the links and a written tutorial at www.thecreatedhome.com.